Welcome to Business Amplified with host Kevin A. Dunlap. This podcast is for small business owners aiming to amplify their enterprises. Explore strategies to play a bigger game by becoming an author, public speaker, podcast host, or expanding your brand in other ways. Elevate your business on Business Amplified. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Business Amplified. This is the show where people are trying to do something new and doing something different so they can actually expand their business and gain more exposure. And I, here, I've got a, a lady here today that's doing exactly that same thing. Her name is Lisa. She has her own online courses, which is one of the things that we preach or talk about is how you can gain a better experience by having your own online courses. So we're going to have Lisa uh, joining us on the show. So Lisa, welcome to the show today. Hey, Kevin, thanks so much for having me. Uh, so, uh, Lisa, t- tell us a little, a little bit about this. This is the question I always like to start, start off all of my interviews with. Uh, Lisa, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you and what is it that you do and why is it that you do it? Great. So I am not that person that has that straight line career path. It's been a little zigzaggy all along. But I love the zigzag because with each of those zigs and the zags, I've learned so much and met a lot of people that I would have never met out elsewise. Um, I started my business back in 2016. I was still in corporate at the time. I had a huge, huge amount of debt that I was paying off for my divorce and a lot of lessons that I had to learn on my own of saying no, not only to myself but to my kids. So while I say that that amount was gifted to me in my divorce, some of it was my own doing. Um, And again, I wouldn't wish that amount on anyone, but I will tell you, when I look back, I would have never learned the lessons that I learned about saying no, about how much power I gave away um, in my marriage by trying to please others. Um, it allowed my kids to unfortunately live a hard lesson, but they're doing so much better now that they've launched their own adult lives. Um, you know, they go, I I swear I will never be like you were. I'm like, great. That is so good for you. (laughs) You've learned the lessons that I couldn't learn otherwise. And then again, I met some wonderful people and learned just how generous so many people are in this world because I was, I was on the struggle bus in a big way. Um, and people stepped in and helped me. They, they taught me things for free. They offered their services to me for free. And the thing was, they said, I said, well, how can I pay you back? I'll pay you back one day. I swear. They go, you can pay me back by bringing it forward and, and doing it the same for other people. So with my business, I always ask people if they wanted to pay in full up front that I would set aside five hundred to a thousand dollars of their payment and I put it in a scholarship fund so that I can work with people that are so ready to do the work but don't have the funds to do it. And in my first year, Kevin, I was able to do almost eighty thousand dollars of scholarships. Nice. Wow. So that that was really it, it just felt so good. I didn't even realize the amount, but my accountants was, hey, what is this scholarship fund that you're doing and, and how does that work? Um, so the reason that I do it is to make an impact, to let other people know that they can do it. Now, if you want to be an astronaut, you're 40 some years old. No, you, that's not going to happen, but you can make an impact. You can do and live your dream. Um without burnout, without overwhelm, without exhaustion. And I do that with my methodology that I actually created for myself without knowing that I was creating it. Well, and one of the things I've learned as well, it sounds like you you learned a similar lesson is sometimes adversity is our best teachers. Mm, It is so true. Because I I remember, and and I've shared this on this show before, one, uh, you may not know this, Lisa, but back in the 1980s, I joined the United States Navy and went inside the nuclear power program, which yeah. at that time was one of the most prestigious things in the Navy. And that basically entailed me going to my basic training. Some people call it boot camp. And then I went to my A school and then I would go to nuclear power school. 
Well, while while I was in A school, an event happened uh, on uh, on Easter weekend, and it caused me to miss uh, to miss class on Monday morning. I filled out a you know a waiver to stay in the nuclear power program and said, okay, we, you know, uh, this was uh, extenuating our circumstances, so uh, we'll let you stay in. And then on, uh, on when I was taking my final exam, I think I got like an 89.86 GPA. This is whether it be in the nuclear power program, you have to be in a 90 GPA. By the way, <laughs> we don't do second waivers. You're out of the nuclear power program. The whole reason I joined the Navy to begin with. So, I mean, I looked at that as like, oh my God, you know what I'm going to do? I just signed up for four years. I'm barely six months in, you know, and then what, what am I going to do? And I was just, you know, frustrated and what have you. Well, back at that time, this is the uh, the, uh, the mid 1980s. Nuclear powered ships were not allowed to be home ported in in foreign countries, and that was just a policy at that time. I, they may still be the same now. I do not know, but the thing is, uh, since I was my orders were, 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 were to go to nuclear power school, but they said, you know, well, you're not going there anymore. We've got to figure out where we're going to send you. Well, uh, lo and behold, I actually uh, uh, I filled out a dream sheet as a place I wanted to go. And they put the second one on my on my sheet, and they said we'll give you this one. So I was actually able to be stationed in Yokosuka, Japan, and I ended up staying there for four nice. years. Nice. So to me, getting kicked out of the nuclear power program allowed me to see a lot more of the world and to live amongst other cultures. So like like you're saying, like you know, what can you learn from those adverse situations? Yeah, and thank you for your service. <laughs> Of course. But I mean, the thing is, you know, being an 18, 19 year old a guy a stationed in another country where I don't speak the language, I don't look like the other people and I stand out. I'm six inches taller than the average person. I mean, I mean, I stood out and when I go to the train station. I'm looking over most people's heads. Mm. I mean, so I stood out. But the thing was, I learned so much about being around other cultures. Yeah. You know, where I'm the minority, you know, I'm the, you know, I'm a white guy, you know, I'm a middle-aged white guy, but you know, I'm now the one that's, I'm the, I'm, as the Japanese would call it, I'm the gaiji, I'm the foreigner. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm, I'm the one that doesn't fit in. So yeah. I, I got to taste that. And that was probably one of the best experiences of my life. And I am so proud of the fact that uh, what happened on Easter weekend of, 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 of the mid eighties was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me, even though it did involve me being detained in, you know, a, a group prison, as it's called, a jail <laughs> for, uh, for that weekend. So yeah. it's like, you know, I look at that night uh, as being like, that's probably one of the best nights of my life, even though it involved, you know, being arrested and, you know, put in jail. Oh my gosh. I know I, when I, um, I did a blog not long ago and it was talking about look back, but don't stare. Just so that you can see all that you have accomplished, all, mm -hmm. you know, you learn so many lessons from looking back, but don't get stuck back there and don't stay back there too long. So you can continue that momentum of the forward. That's, that, that's very well said because a lot of people do dwell on their past. Mm -hmm. And they, and they get stuck in that uh, in that situation. I don't. It doesn't matter if it's your personal life or your business life. People get, people do get stuck on, on previous events. Right. But the thing is, what can you learn from that event, and how can you use that to propel yourself forward? Would yeah, you agree? You. I do I, I wholeheartedly, and I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and solopreneurs. So you know, they're like, "Oh, there's so much to do. There's this list to do, and how will I ever get it accomplished?" And that's when I say, just look back at all that you've accomplished just from three months ago, maybe even a month ago. How much have you accomplished so far? And um, they go, "Oh yeah, that's right." And I and you know, I learned that. I definitely should not be creating my web page or doing anything like that. So one of the other things I talk about is trading time for money or trading money for time because you can't get the time back and showing them just how much um, that we can barter or, you know, I use the example, like if you were cleaning your house and you looked at your hourly rate, if you gave yourself an hourly rate, would it really be worth scrubbing your toilet for $250 an hour or was it better just to have somebody else do it and you're promoting someone else's business by having them come in and clean the office or your home or wherever it is that you're working and I learned the same thing uh, from somebody else it was the person I first heard this from 
but probably about 15 years ago saying ex exactly what you're saying. He says, uh, he says, what is your hourly rate? And if you're out you know, doing, like you're saying, uh, cleaning a toilet, and they say your hourly rate is $250. Now, if you can have, hire somebody else to do it for 20 bucks an hour, well, you no longer, uh, you, you, you can use your time more effectively on your business rather than doing the, the mundane work that you can hire somebody else to do. It could be the cleaning your toilets. It could be designing your website. It doesn't matter. If you're, if you're not the expert at that, hire the expert to do it for you. Like I know before we talked on the show uh, or, or, or in our pre-discussion is that uh, Lisa, as she's uh, you know uh, uh, creating and refining her courses, she has uh, third-party services to, uh, to go there and, and, and basically uh, uh, test it out you know, or, or do test marketing on that. Yeah, because you know what? I can look at something and I have a little problem with perfection at times. So it's like, oh, wait a minute, I'll change that. Oh, I'll change that. And it's like, every time I change something, I'm almost procrastinating and delaying offering it to the people who need it most. And so it, it took me a while, but I did learn to just say, you know what? There are focus groups out there. They get the course, so they get the, they get the experience as well, but they're also, that's their job is a focus group. So I'm promoting another small business. I'm giving the course for free because they're looking at it. And then they give me the feedback so that I don't get stuck on that hamster wheel of perfection, trying to make it just so perfect, but yet never getting it out to the to the masses. And that is, I think it is a gold mine in, in itself right there, because I'm and i not really thought of things from that perspective of having a focus group. However, the thing is, they happen all the time. I mean, I look at anybody, uh, any new, I don't know, because I lived in Las Vegas for a few years, uh, any new uh, pilot for a TV show will go to, like say, a focus group to say, hey, what do you like? What did you uh, did not like yeah. before, it, before it ever goes into production or goes on the air? Because you know, the thing is, we, we, we rather t uh, test market this out with a small group of people, of random people sometimes, or in your case, you know, a small business owner say, hey, I, I give me feedback on this course and so, that, so that I can refine this. And I'm going to go off on a tangent here for a moment. I have an accountability partner uh, that I work with. And we talk on a, on, a, on a weekly basis. And the thing is, he, uh, at the time of this recording, he's in the process of launching one of his courses. And then after he he was launching it, he said, let me go ahead and give it away for free to get, to get some feedback. And the feedback he he that he got was like, oh, my gosh, I made this way too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> and he was working on it for several months before he realized, like, just dumb it, not to dumb it down, but just make it more simple, a little bit more digestible. Yeah, I got that same feedback. Um, what is the, what's the actor, um, KISS, keep it simple. I think they say stupid, but keep it simple, whatever it was that that acronym used to be. So. Well, and, and yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, I've built uh, several courses myself uh, over the years, and and, and sometimes I, I do look at it as like you know this is like you say I keep it simple. I'm just gonna say silly. Keep it simple, silly. <laughs> Instead yeah, that's of so much nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes I mean I do look at it as like you know I, I do want to make it more digestible for people, but yeah, sometimes I look at so I'm way overcomplicating this. Or if I'm creating a webinar, it's like wait now one of the things I learned many years ago, like if you're going to be doing a presentation on stage. The fewer words that you use on a slide or a flip chart, the better. Yeah. If you, you know, if I can use two words versus ten words, two words is better. Yeah. And it's because it's just keeping it simple. You know, you don't have to have, um, like, say, on, on a on a PowerPoint presentation, you don't need to have five bullet points of uh, three sentences each. I mean, that's just that's just way too much. So yeah. just just keep it a lot more simple. And we, we, that's one of the things I learned when I was getting my accreditation in neurolinguistics is saying what you need to say in the least amount of words possible, because otherwise it overcomplicates. And then the perception of what you're trying to say sometimes gets lost, or the person may just perceive it totally out of context of what you meant. So keeping it very simple, saying fewer words, but making those words truly count, and then asking. You know, how did you perceive that? Tell me what you just heard me say. Or like, do you have any questions on and then reiterate what it was that I said? But again, keeping it so, so small and simple. 
Uh, I know you've got a course uh, that's either about to come out or has already come out. Could you uh, tell, tell us a little bit about that course uh, that you have? Yeah, so it started out to be the foundations of, of an inspired life. And again, my focus group said, well, inspiring is almost like Mother Teresa. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, no, <laughs> we can't even compare to her. And they didn't believe they could be inspiring or have an inspired life. So I changed it to a fulfilled life because the feedback was, well, if I could get fulfilled in this area of my life or this area of my life, because I work in um, the nine categories of life, which Thomas Leonard called it the nine environments. Um, when I was first starting my journey, I was in a mastermind group and the gentleman that was leading that mastermind had the permission from Thomas Leonard before he passed away that anyone that took that course from him could use that chart, if you will. And he really um, took the common denominators of human beings and put it into the environments of you. And so I looked at each of those categories of life and said, how are you not fulfilled in this category of your life? So it's your body and it's not just your physical body, but like your organs and everything of how it works. And then it looks at yourself and yourself comprises of your character, your emotional self and your intellectual self. And then nature, are you getting out in nature and when you're out there, are you truly fulfilled? Or are you just going there saying, yep, I, I took my walk, but are you enjoying and experiencing everything that nature has to offer? You know, looking at your physical environment, your house, your office, your car, your home, where are you fulfilled? What's, what are you tolerating in that environment that's zapping you and just taking the life right out of you? Um, your financial life. So many people go, oh, well, the finances are the finances are the finances. And as entrepreneurs, many of them forget to pay themselves, especially when they're starting off. And we're like, is that fulfilling to work for free? <clears throat> I don't think so. Um, and then, you know, how is your social network involved in that? So the course is all around for having a fulfilled life in every category of life, including your mindset. Is your mm -hmm. mindset holding you back from fulfillment based on things that you've been taught or your culture? Your, your parents and your ancestors, they only knew what they knew, but you've learned things along the way. So are you carrying those beliefs with you that you really don't believe in, but you feel like, I have to do this because this has been done for decades and hundreds of years? Or is it something maybe that you can just tweak or something you release altogether? I mean, the, the thing is, I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from. I think in my second book, I, I, I wrote about something about that as well. I call it the, uh, the, the life wheel, which is, yeah. you know, the, the, yeah. the 10 different, the 10 different aspects of your life is like little pie shape. And how do you rate yourself on a scale between zero and 10, 10 being is perfect. It cannot get any better. And, and, and usually I, I tell people, if you're rating yourself a 10, you're lying to yourself because it can always be better. <laughs> right. No, it is. It could be a 9.9. <laughs> yeah, so that balance wheel is part of the neurolinguistics and Thomas Leonard played with linguistics and neurolinguistics, but he he took a spin on it, which I think all of us do, and created the environments because his belief was your environment is so much stronger than willpower. Okay. And the example would be, let's say that you're trying to release weight or shed some weight, but there's ice cream in your freezer. There's only so long that you're going to avoid that ice cream. And then you're like, I'm going to get the ice cream. But if the ice cream is not there, you have to go to the market, get dressed, go to the market, find the ice cream, come home, and then sit down and eat it. The chances are it's less likely that you're going to do that than if it was already there, which is part of your environment. And that is uh, and that is so true. And I love what she just, she just said there. She said re release some weight. She did not say lose weight. 
And I was, and I learned back in 2010, so that was over 10 years ago, that to say, if you lose something, there's a good chance you'll find it again. <laughs> yeah, and it's not so much about finding the weight, but it's, you go back to the habits that you had that put the weight right. on you. Because your brain really wants you to do the least amount of work possible to get the best results. But the, and like you said, it is a mindset. It is a mindset shift yeah. that you have to do, and it's not a diet or a fad. Because the diets and fads are those are just short term goals. Because you, you have to you have to have habits uh, change, and uh, that's in your personal life, and the way you live your personal life, your spiritual life, your business life. I mean, every aspect. Uh, if you want, to, if you do want to do something different, you have to adopt new mindsets and new. skills. Good, uh, new habits and then these are got to be habits that, that you feel do support you yeah so kevin i love what you just said about your business life and your your personal life and your spiritual life because people ask me all the time they go well how can you be a life and a business coach and i'm like well my philosophy is if you get in alignment with your core values of who you truly are in this world in your personal life then layer on your business life and make sure all of that carries over, your life is going to have such an ease and flow about it. Will there be challenges? Absolutely. But you'll be able to respond to those challenges opposed to reacting to them. So I have all of my clients look at their life, their personal life first. And because when I ask them what your goals for your business are, then they can just go boom, 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 boom. And then I'll say, well, what are your goals for your personal life? Well, I'm going to get to those once I fulfill these. And then I'll, I'll ask them, I'll say, well, um, what's your vision for your business? Boom, they can just tell you. What's your vision for your life? What do you mean? I go, what are you visualizing for your life? Well, when I retire, are you really going to wait that long to, <laughs> when you could have it together? So it's my course about fulfilling your life is fulfilling each of your categories in your life. But aligning yourself with your core values and then eliminating everything else and anyone else that doesn't align to get you to where you want to be. And it goes back to that um, saying about so many times we say yes all the time, but learning to say no more gets us to our yes quicker. Yes, I mean, I, I so uh, agree with that. Because um, when I learned, started learning about uh, core values back in 2010, and then I realized that uh, sometimes, and I'd say, I'd say a lot of people have this, is where their personal life and or their business life are not in alignment with their core values. And okay. that's where dissonance comes in. That's where, that's where like, you know, it, like, where, you know, where you feel like you, you're not getting things done properly because you're, you're, you're going against your own core values. So whatever it is that you're doing, it, it does need to be in alignment to your core values. And core values are very, very difficult to change. So stop trying to change those. Right. those I mean, you can't say, hey, I'm going to change my value on this. Life. And then you're going to be living outside of your alignment because you're lying to yourself. So, yeah. uh, so that we you know whatever kind of business that you that you are trying to build, you know, go back to your core values and see if it's in alignment with that. And if it and, is not, then it's probably not a business you should be in. Then, yeah. And Kevin, I say that the, you. one of the things that I learned on my own when I was going through this whole process was a lot of what I thought my core values were were actually my needs and my wants not being met. Because I was taught growing up in the South that I should be grateful for what I have. And I go, well, I am grateful, but I want more than just food and shelter and air and water. Like I want other things. That's survival mode. I want to thrive. So being able to express what I really wanted and what I needed to be successful. So I had to go really deep peel back all those layers and really discover what my values are and like you said they don't change they are who you were born with those in you and so mine is being authentic i i am who i am whether i'm with the ceo of a fortune 1000 company or i'm out here on the farm just being me in my box and digging in the dirt you know, the other one is growth. I, I just thrive on learning. And when I was younger, I didn't know I was dyslexic 
or that I was ADD. I didn't find that out until I was 43. And I was like, well, that explains my life up to this point. Um, but I found ways to, to learn that worked for me. And I read, I probably read three to four books a month. Um, I'm not very good with audio, which is interesting because a lot of people dyslexic love audio. So they don't, I, I want to touch, I'm very tactile. So in kinesthetic, so I want to touch the book. I'll keep the libraries going. Um, but I want to touch the book. I want to smell the pages and just en engross myself into the book, whether it's a novel, a biography or a self-help book or just a book. Um, I did a collaboration uh, 2021 with a group of women I would have never met. I would have never met these women. And I wanted to do a book. And I was like, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it one day. And I would start writing. I mean, you've written several books. I would start writing and then I would stop. And then I would start writing again. And then I would stop. And I did this collaboration and it was so much fun. Even though we, we were like each other's accountability partner, but not really. I mean, we were just collaborating together. And the book was about second chances and how each of us had had a second chance in different parts of our lives and how we're thriving because we got that second chance or that reset button. And I just, I never knew that you could collaborate and write a book with a group of people. And so I've written one book in a collaboration. <laughs> Well, the thing is, there are, I mean, I've, I've seen that before, and now I see it all the time. Like, you watch the news again. And this one guest is also, a, he's a co-author of this book with this other guest uh, on our show today. Like, it's it's so common now that you don't have to put yourself under all that pressure. And the thing is, by collaborating, you're getting with other, you're getting together with other like-minded people with this, with a similar interest in at least that one main, that one main topic. Yeah. So that was, that was my, that was my fun part of 2021. Well, not, well, you're now a, a a a published author, and that's that's and that's a great thing that you can say. Add that to your resume. <laughs> Check. Yes, right. there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I wrote my first book uh, in 2015, and the only reason I wanted to write a book was because so I could say I was an author. That was the only reason I wrote it. I didn't get any help. Well, I got help, but uh, I, I, I did not get any help in the in the, the, the writing side of it. I did it in my second book. I hired a, a content editor. And that was that was a world of a difference. But my uh, but my first book, I just wanted to be an author. That's oh, that's the only thing. That was the only reason I wrote that book. And the funny thing is, I say I've said this on a, a few of our shows before. Uh, I was in real estate at the time. It was a book called Lease Options Made Easy. So I was specialized in lease option real estate. I did that for uh, almost 20 years in Las Vegas. And uh, and I, I, mean, I got out of real estate in 2020, but this was 2015. And the whole thing I was, I wanted to say, hey, I want to go speak at these real estate investment club associations. I know I've got a book. I got a book on my topic here. I mean, I'm going to, uh, and I just wanted to write that book. And the thing was, it, it was life changing for me. Um, because then when I finally decided to go the more professional route and hired a, you know, a content editor to help me uh, make sure my book made sense, um, that's, uh, the, the, and that led to my third book and, the, and that, that led to my fourth book, which led to my creating my, uh, my, my business, my, my whole business, Optimal Performance Academy that I created in March of 2022 was based upon my fourth book that was launched in 2021. So that first book was was the domino, that were like a domino effect going into the second, third, and fourth. And that's just, you know, that just completely launched my career, uh, a different aspect of my career. Yeah. And I'm going to say those out, out there, and I was going to say things to Lisa here, is uh, if you're thinking about becoming a, an author, I'm going to say become an author. Because here's the thing. If whenever you become an author, and I always say this, are you aware that the word author is derived from another word. And that other word is the word authority. Oh, yeah. So when you become an author, assuming you have good content, that makes you the automatic authority on that topic. So if, if Lisa here was going to be uh, speaking to somebody that's about giving you know uh, women a, a second chances to say maybe after divorce, she would be the perfect candidate because she's the author, or at least in this case, the co-author of that book. Yeah. And I've been very, you know, people will challenge me on this, what I'm getting ready to say, but I've been very fortunate to have many second chances. 
or third or fourth or fifth. Not only in my business, but in, in life. Um, I have three kids. The Western doctors told me I would never have children after my cervical cancer when I was like 20 some years old. I was like, you don't get to tell me what I can and can't do. Like I have three beautiful adult children now, very healthy. Um, so I felt, felt like that was a second chance. I took my own health into my hands and and worked with holistic doctors before they were a big fad or, you know, a thing. Um, I've had second chances in love. My very first love when I was 18, I fallen back in love with him all over again. Now as an adult at 58, um, we got back together in 2021 after going through all sorts of things with each of our lives personally. Um, you know, I've had two or three businesses that just didn't do good at all. They did great until they didn't. But again, it, it brought me to the neuro-linguistics piece where I was able to just get so fascinated with how the brain works. And it's almost like a separate entity of our bodies and our mind. So it's like the three of them working together. Um, I got a second chance on just all my beliefs that I had. And, and playing small and believing I had to be and I should be and could be and would be, you know, I, I was able to press the reset button and start over again. And, you know, launching this course is almost like a reset again, because I used to not really believe in courses because it meant learning and it meant school. And I have my whole new definition of learning because growth is so important to me now that I've learned how to use strategies with the dyslexia and the ADD. So I, I get to reset and learn and grow like I love doing and helping other people do the same thing. I know for myself, uh, I, I've always, uh, I always loved learning. I mean, I went through seven years of college, three years uh, graduate school, four years undergrad. I've got a, I've got a bachelor's degree. I don't have a master's degree, and then uh, I've been finding out uh, from myself that I love learning something new. I love, I mean, because when I learn something new, I'm like, oh, I feel accomplished. Yeah. For example, uh, when I do my courses, a lot of my stuff, I, I had to go teach myself how to edit uh, audio and video. And, and after I learned how to do that, I'm like, well, I could do so much stuff now. And then in 2023, this little thing came out um, that, and I started just, uh, and I'm still diving heavily into it. I'm going to actually say I'm delving into it heavily. And the only reason I say the word delving is because if you do anything in AI that asks you to write something, <laughs> it's going to use the word delve. So I always change that word to something else. So if you guys are using AI, you have to see the word delve in, in your description. Go change that word. But yeah. uh, but anyway, it's, but but learning how to use AI effectively and, and, and to the benefit of my business, because that's what's going on at the time of this recording. Uh, maybe in two or three years from now, when other new uh, systems and technologies come out, I would love to go out and learn that new stuff and just, just be a voracious uh, uh, a student. Yeah. So besides AI, what are you learning? Well, I mean, uh, at, at this moment in time, I'm really learning how to use AI. I mean, um, one of the things I've, I've been thinking about is like, hey, maybe I should, uh, I've been thinking about a restaurant here in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. There's a type of food here, and please do not copy what I'm going to say here. There's a particular kind of food that it does not exist in Raleigh. I go, why don't why do they have a restaurant that, that does this? And and the rest is, does, does not exist. And I'm going to even tell you what it is. It's Cajun slash Creole food, Louisiana yeah, right. food. Really good Cajun food. Yes, yeah. I mean you got a good crawfish at today and jambalaya, uh, you know, uh, alligator bites, uh, you know, all of these different things. And I asked AI to uh, create a menu for me. Yeah. As a create a, a, a appetizers, a main dish. Uh, and, and, and these different categories, making sure that we have, uh, let's say, a rice-based, fish-based, vegan-based, ve uh, a vegetarian-based, and it's and it gave me that that whole thing. And so, well, now give me at least ten different uh, 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 drinks, uh, alcoholics slash non-alcoholic drinks. And they gave me the whole menu. They go, well, thank you for a great description. How do you make these drinks? What is it? Well, how much goes into that? It gave, so it gives me all of that. This is well, that jambalaya that you mentioned. What are the exact ingredients of that? And it gave me all the all the like, oh my god, like doing this thing. 
in just minutes, like it, it is absolutely incredible. And that's just for our menu. Now imagine what you can do for, let's say for this course here or, or this, um, or even for this show, this show right now is being recorded on video and audio. And I have a transcript thing called Fathom turned on, which is part of Zoom. Now I get that transcript and I can create an entire show notes, bio and everything on, uh, on the guest within 10, 15 minutes, all using uh, artificial intelligence. And that's the today's technology. You know, I don't have no idea what it's going to be like a, a, a month from now or a year from now. So th that's the stuff that I'm uh, diving deeply into is how to make my life more simple by using uh, uh, artificial intelligence and not being afraid of it. Yeah. One of the things I, I talk a lot about is let's say you have this, let's say, let's say, Lisa, this is you know, a few years ago and you have a bicycle shop. And this is always one I always like to do because you love to see how kids, you know, getting their first bicycle, see, you know, that smile on their faces, maybe that adult that, that's just learning how to ride a bicycle. You love selling a bicycle because you just love that experience. But this new fad comes on and you call it the biggest fad. It's not going to take any traction. This thing called the internet. Nobody's going to do the internet. Nobody's going to buy a bicycle on online they have to see go to my bicycle store to buy if you did not adopt or adapt to uh, uh, in that case back in the late 90s into uh, uh, into the internet you're going to be going out of business yeah. if you did not uh, adapt to being doing doing things online because of, since covid you're going to go, uh, go out of business if you don't adapt to uh, artificial intelligence that which is the big thing going on right now you're going to go out of business so my thing is learn about what you know what is the newest uh stuff that's going on which whatever your business is and how can you adapt to this and i would say this uh, uh one other thing i was running a lease option business starting in 2004. that's when i moved to las vegas and when if you're doing a lease option that means the investor has to buy a house get a tenant buyer uh, uh, into the house and then sell that house to that tenant buyer hopefully within one or two years at a higher price so, so it, it requires uh, appreciation. Do you think 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, to, during the housing bubble, uh, that my my business probably had to adapt to do to do uh, uh, practices? I'd completely revamp my entire business around that. Yeah. So the thing is, you have to be adjustable to whatever going on and uh, whatever is going on. If you don't adapt, then you, you you're going to you you you're, you're going to drown. Right. It's so true, and we, we've seen that time and time again as new innovations and new technology and and just new things that you can't even think of right now that would happen, happening. And you see the smaller businesses especially go out of business, and even some of the corporate go, go out of business, you know, because they're, they're so traditional. <laughs> and, yeah, traditional is great. It works. But you, you've got to be able to marry the traditional with the innovation and keep it going. So Lisa, we're, 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 we're running close to running out of yeah. time. Now, what what is one of the best ways for somebody to get, to get a hold of you if they want to talk with you more about your courses, your second chances, you know, and these other things that you're doing? How can somebody get a hold of you? Yeah, so my website is r, the number two, rlife.com. And you could email me at lisa.couturier, and I'm going to spell it for you. It's C-O-U-T-U-R-I-E-R -E at R, the number two, rlife.com. Okay, so again, it's going to be, go to her website at www.r, the letter R, the number two, the letter R again, so r2rlife.com. Again, I'm going to say for, for AI purposes, www.r2rlife.com. And then if you want to reach out to her uh, directly, uh, I'll just put her name uh, before the, the website, be Lisa at uh, Courtier, your, no, I guess dot, it's French. Lisa dot, Lisa, Lisa dot, dot Courier at r2rlife.com. And all of this is going to be down in the show notes. So de definitely, uh, if you if you do that, uh, go, go go down in the show notes. And also, this is the uh, moment where, where, where I do a little bit of my own self-promoting. If you are know anybody that would like to be on the show, or if you yourself would like to be on the show, you've got a message you want to share with the world, just go ahead and go to our pre-interview for our 15-minute uh, pre-interview at www.businessamplified.net forward slash pre-interview. There's no dash. Again, that's businessamplified.net forward slash pre-interview. Uh, so Lisa, is there anything else that you would like to share with, with our guests uh, before we go today? Yeah, I'm going to invite all of your guests to look at themselves, 
sit with themselves in the quiet, go outside, if you will, and ask yourself, what do I need to release to receive what I'm really wanting? Very well said, especially if you can get out into nature, because we are all, I mean, we need the vitamin A, we need the vitamin C, we need the, the, the vitamins that we get from the sunlight from the, uh, from just from uh, fresh air. Now I'm going to go uh, dovetail a little bit, uh, a little bit off of what Lisa just said, and she maybe agree with me. Now, this is something that's more West Coast kind of idea. So if you guys are on the East Coast, just, just bear with me. It's what we call woo woo kind of stuff. And it's something that, that I definitely do talk about, especially with, with my clients, especially if they hit a roadblock, is to go get a notepad, a paper notepad with a pencil or pen. I don't care which one you use, but not a computer, not your cell phone, none of that, nothing electronic, something you, that you can hand write, and then do something what I call free writing. I don't know if Lisa's ever heard of this, but free writing basically is I don't, it doesn't really matter which who, if you believe in God, a higher self, Allah, you know, whatever you want to call it. But on this piece of paper, at the very top of the page, I would say, if it's, let's just call it, it's, it's Allah. So A equals Allah, L equals Lisa, or K equals Kevin. And then start having a, a written conversation with yourself. So what I normally say is start off by saying K. Uh, and then with a the colon, I said, okay, is anybody out there? Allah says, yes, I'm always here. And just start writing whatever is being written. Just that way you can now, because if you don't know how, what you need to, to release, as Lisa would just say, start doing a free writing exercise and just go, just take 30, 45 minutes and just let it go wherever it goes. The very first time I did this, the lady gave us 30 minutes, then she gave us 45. I ended up writing 10 pages. This is like 2014. And that's when I started uh, getting into the coaching business. Yeah, I love this it. This is before I, I wrote my first book. <laughs> no, I, I love that. And one of the other things um, Natasha Graziano always talks about is writing it as if it's already happened. So you you go through your process of what you just talked about, of the free writing. Then you discover what it is that you really want. Because a lot of people don't even have time to stop to go, this is what I want. This is what I'm really wanting to have. So once you do what you do with the free writing, then write what it is that you really want as if it's already happened. And the thing is, you don't start off with like, what do I really want? This is going to be a process. This is going to be a flow. Yeah. So you, you, it's like you're wading into a, a pool or, or into the ocean or, or to the Gulf of Mexico or a pond or a lake or whatever. You just and start, start start off slow. And then then you will, once the flow gets down, then you can really start to discover about yourself. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for having me on. It's always a pleasure talking with you and looking at your courses, listening to the podcast. And I hope that your audience will get something from what I talked about today. And if they want to do the course, they can find it online. You can go to her website at r2rlife.com and you, you'll discover more about how to uh, learn more about the courses that she has. And Lisa, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, until next time, be amazing. Thanks for tuning in to another empowering episode of Business Amplified with Kevin A. Dunlap. If you found value in today's insights, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. Keep amplifying your business. And remember, your success journey is our inspiration. Until next time on Business Amplified, go out there and make your business thrive.